Well, hello, King Street Church. Mark Vincenti here, campus pastor at Huntington University. And uh, I'm back in my office in Indiana. And uh, it was great this weekend to be able to be with you, to see old friends and to preach the word to you from Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, which says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And we talked about that passage. We broke that passage down and it was just a great time. And I just want to say again, thank you for the blessing that King Street has been to me and my family. And it was awesome to be able to be with you all. Now, being back here at Huntington, uh, it's fun being a part of a, an institution of higher education. And obviously we are trying to equip people in their fields, equip them with knowledge that they need to be able to be great professionals out in the world. Uh, so growing in knowledge is super important to us uh, at Huntington University, but just as important and even more important than just intellectual rigor, as important as that is, is growing in wisdom. And that's what we were talking about at King Street this week. And that's why Proverbs 9:10 is our key theme verse at Huntington University this year, because we don't just wanna grow in knowledge, we wanna grow in wisdom. And wisdom uh, is really important. And that's why our motto at Huntington University is Christ's scholarship service. Those three pieces are all important. Christ has to be first though. In order for our scholarship to be what it truly can be to honor God, Christ has to be first. And then through our scholarship, as we learn, then we're equipped to go out into the world and serve Christ through our professions. So whatever your profession is, whether you're a student right now in middle school, high school, college, uh, or whether you are out in the world as a professional doing your work, all the things we need to be doing are doing it with Christ at the center of what we're doing. Christ has to be number one in order for us to build lives of wisdom. And that's what we talked about this weekend when we talked about the fact that uh, that fear of the Lord talks about reverence and knowledge of the Holy One talks about intimacy. And this, this ties in really well with Colossians. You know, uh, Pastor Rob's sermon last week from Colossians chapter one uh, talked about how Christ is supreme. He is number one. And as you progress through the book of Colossians, uh, this theme will continue, this idea that Christ needs to be supreme. Our lives need to be wrapped around Christ. Jesus isn't just a part of our life, some religious component of our life, but Jesus is the central theme, the central person and he needs to be the center in our lives. And what's interesting is the Apostle Paul, who wrote the book of Colossians, he's masterful in his letters at first building a theological foundation or framework for us to understand something. And then he builds on top of that, like that's the foundation. And then he builds on top of that. And that's what he does in Colossians. So in Colossians chapter one, he's talking about theology, the theology of who Jesus is a Christology, a theology of Christ. And then he moves to the practical. So when you get to chapter three, which you're not there yet, but you're going to get to chapter three, you'll see verses like, whatever you do, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, work with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for men. That's in verse 17 and verse 23. So you see this first, he sets the theology and then he moves from that to the practical. What's it look like in our lives? And so I've got a couple of tips for you uh, for, for how to cultivate reverent intimacy with Christ. So cultivating reverent intimacy, how do we do that? Well, one way we can do that is through the way we read the Bible. Now, I know that we've got the chronological uh, Bible reading plan. Many of you are probably doing that. Uh, and for those of you who are, you're in October, which is the Gospels. You're reading about the life of Jesus Christ. And that's a perfect place to be when you're talking about cultivating reverent intimacy in Bible reading. So I just want to give you two tips for how to cultivate reverent intimacy in your walk with Jesus through your Bible reading. And it's first, read reverently. And second, read relationally. Read reverently and read relationally. So what do I mean by read reverently? What I mean is as you read through the Gospels or whatever section of the Bible you're reading, I want you to ask yourself, where am I seeing wow moments with Jesus? Where would I say wow about something Jesus said, Jesus did, 
an attitude, an action, a teaching of Jesus that I say, wow, that's amazing. And this can be a little bit tricky for those of us who've been reading the Bible for a long time because we're so familiar with some of these stories. But we want to kind of take a step back and try to have uh, new, fresh glasses that we're reading the Bible through, where we're looking and saying, what is something Jesus does that is wow? And use wow then as an acronym, worthy of worship. So how you might do this is if you journal, if you write, what you'll do is you'll open up your journal and you'll write W-O-W, worthy of worship, wow. Where do I see a wow moment with Jesus in what I'm reading? And then you can put bullet points. You know, this was amazing. This was amazing. Jesus said this, Jesus did this. There was this miracle, it was amazing. I remember when I was reading the Bible with my son, he was about three years old, and we were reading about Jesus turning water into wine. We called it grape juice, water into grape juice. And I remember telling him this story and, okay, they put water in these, these jars and then they pulled it out and they drank it and it was grape juice. And my three-year-old son or four years old, I'm not sure, he was, he was a preschooler, he goes, oh, that's amazing. I'm like, that is amazing. That's a, that's a wow moment. And at that moment, my son was teaching me to read the Bible through fresh eyes because I had become so familiar with that story that I forgot how amazing that truly was. So if you're reading that story, you would write, Jesus did a miracle. He changed the molecular structure of water into wine. That was incredible, right? So that's a wow moment. So read reverently, look for wow moments where there's something about God, there's something about Jesus that when you read the Bible, you say, wow, that's incredible. That's a wow moment. And that can increase our reverence. So a way to cultivate reverence is to look for wow moments where Jesus, where the Lord is worthy of worship because of something he said, something he did, an attitude he had. And then the second part is read relationally. To read relationally is to read and be asking the Lord for his insight as you read. So it's something like this, Lord, is there any way you're speaking to me right now through this passage? Is there any invitation you're giving to me through this passage? Is there something about your heart that I can grasp here through this passage? Is there something you're inviting me into in my relationship with you through this passage? So first you're looking for reverence, wow moments, and then you're looking for relationship. God, I don't just want to read this for information. I wanna do that, but I wanna read this because of our relationship. I want to hear from you. I want you to speak to me. I want to be challenged by you, encouraged by you, drawn deeper into relationship with you through the Bible reading. So it's not just intellectual. It's also a heart exercise as I'm reading the word. So we can pursue reverent intimacy in scripture by faith because God meets us in his word. He speaks to us through his word. If we have that posture of reverence and that posture of relationship. So to wrap things all up, as you continue in your Bible reading, whether you're doing the chronological Bible reading plan or not, if you're not doing that and you don't necessarily have a Bible reading plan, I'd encourage you jump into the Gospels or jump into the Psalms. Start one of those two places and look for wow moments and look for relationship moments. God, is there an invitation you have for me in that? And those are two ways that you can pursue reverent intimacy in your walk with Christ through your scripture reading. And that way you can continue to cultivate this reality, this wisdom lifestyle of fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And as you work your way through the book of Colossians, and as you work your way through your Bible reading plan, I trust that God's gonna to speak to you in some really significant ways where you say, wow, and where you're drawn deeper in intimacy with Jesus Christ. God bless you guys. Uh, continue to pray for us at Huntington University and know that I'm praying for you guys at King Street. See ya.